Sumit, today we are going to be talking about one of your papers that got published in Management Science. And I would like everyone to know that Management Science is the most prestigious journal in operations management. So congratulations. Oh, thank you very much, Bhagwan. What, what is the title of your paper? Uh, it's titled A Model for Integrated Assortment and Inventory Planning. And it's with a co-author, uh, Victor Martinez de Albinez at the EAC Business School. So Sumit, so tell me a little bit about how you came to this problem. Why did you decide to work on this? So it's very interesting. We were looking at uh, data for uh, different retail stores. And what we see is that the assortments that are made available in these stores are not the same. Right? We have large retail stores where we see uh, where they get the full assortment. The smaller retail stores, they do not get the full assortment. They just get an assortment of, say, yeah. the more popular product. Right. And so then we were wondering, you know, why is this, what is driving this? Yeah. And, and the obvious answer was inventory, the space consideration. Yeah, obviously. Right. Right? Because you have larger stores, more space, you can offer the full assortment. Smaller stores, you can't. Right. So then uh, it's clearly not a one-size-fits-all solution in right. that one has to make these decisions in a tailored manner. And when we looked at the academic literature, we found that there was very little on this topic. You know, how do you make these decisions together, assortment and inventory? Okay, so you looked at the real world, you found that this is an important problem, and then you went back to the literature that you have studied and you found that nobody had actually solved this problem before. So there was a gap. So this is a great example of research going in to solve a problem that's important, which nobody has looked at before. So that's, that's a fantastic cue for many of our younger colleagues who are trying to do research in this field. Okay, so inventory management is very important for firms, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the idea here is that if I have a, a store which is in a city, let's say, uh, it costs money to rent the space. Uh, so you have to stock things the right way and the trade-off is that if it's not in stock and the customer shows up, then you lost that sale, right? Absolutely. But at the same time, mm -hmm. to stock it so much that you're never stocked out is expensive because it requires space and so on and so forth. Absolutely. So this problem has been studied for many years, mm -hmm. but there is something additional in your paper that you do. What is that? So uh, one is, the, yes, as you say rightly, the inventory management problem has been studied quite extensively in operations management. Uh, most of the work uh, tends to look at a single product. So Single product, okay. Uh, whereas uh, here we are pushing the frontier a little bit and look at the case where you have an assortment of products. Right, right. So, so, Which is actually pretty important because usually if I'm buying, let's say, yogurt, Mm -hmm. I'm not just interested in one, I could buy Danone or I could buy something else. So you're saying you could offer me different types of products mm -hmm. which are substitutes of each other. Absolutely. So that's the innovation in your paper. Now you're studying not just one product, mm -hmm. but many such products. Right. So how do we, first of all, understand what products to stock? What products to stock? So that is the assortment question. And then on top of that, uh, how much of each of these products to stock? Right. Which is an inventory question. Right. So now it's a complicated problem because uh, on top of having different types of different assortment of products, mm -hmm. which are sort of substitutes, the margins you get on each one of these products as a seller might be different. Absolutely. Right. So that makes it even more complicated. You want to have in stock the one that gives you highest margin, but at the same time, uh, you ought to offer a wide variety of products, and that's expensive. So that is the problem you are trying to solve. Exactly, so as you rightly put it, the, uh, not all products are equally profitable to the retailer. So as a result, if you were to offer the entire assortment, the full assortment, it may be possible that customers go and purchase, say, the lower margin product, right. which doesn't, uh, uh, which may hurt the retailer's profitability. Right, right. And as you also point out, stores have limited capacity. Limited space. So you yeah. can't stock everything. And so one has to really think carefully as to you know, how to do this. Right. Also, 
when this has been studied in the literature, just the inventory problem, they sort of look at it as a one-shot thing. Mm -hmm. That, you know, how much to stock or not stock. But I think you're looking at it kind of a dynamic way, how to replenish it, right? Uh, exactly. When it runs out, how frequently do you want to replenish it? So there's an added dynamic element which makes the problem even more complex to solve. Is that right? Yeah, so it's challenging enough as it is. Because if you think about the inventory problem, there is uncertainty in demand. Uh, there is uncertainty in when you get the stock. So that makes it a challenging problem. Now, when you think about the assortment problem, that is also difficult. It is complicated because the number of possible assortments uh, grows exponentially. It just blows up with a number of products. So let me, let me explain that. So if I go from, let's say, two or three or four assortments, mm -hmm. then there are many combinations. One, two, and four, two, and four, two, and three, and four. And that's what you mean that it really quickly jumps up. Exactly. So simple strategy which says, I'm going to try out all possible things. Right. Just... That blows up and that you can't work. really solve it. Okay. So that's where your paper comes in. That's where the paper comes in and because now we are trying to make these decisions together. Together, simultaneously. So a, a common approach I would say is to break this into silos where you uh, first make the assortment decisions, figure out what to stock and then try to figure out how much of each to stock. Right. Now that can be suboptimal because yes. uh, this is really something that you have to consider uh, together simultaneously together. and that is where uh, we are coming in. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go and look at the approach you use to solve uh, this model that you call it and I think that's very clever. So mm -hmm. you started by saying, okay, I'm going to solve the problem exactly Mm -hmm. what we call, you know, in close form, mm -hmm. for a very simple version of this, one product. That's right. Right. And then you're able to solve it in close form. What does that mean? Uh, close form means that we are able to get expressions for, you know, what is the right inventory level for this single product. There's an equation. There is an equation which helps. And you can plug in and then you can solve this and that gives you a lot of confidence because you can do different kinds of experiments exactly. what to see. If, to see. Okay. Yeah, exactly. okay. What is your line of attack then? Because that's the one we want to solve, right? That's a realistic situation. Yeah. Right. So we end up making some approximations uh, we, uh, to make the problem easier to analyze mathematically. For example, we assume that one can stock, say, fractional quantities. Mm -hmm. Now, that really doesn't happen in practice, but to make this problem tractable, that is something that we make. And given those assumptions, we are able to go and solve an approximate version of this problem. An approximate, which may be good enough because it's better than crude force and it's better than just intuition, right? Absolutely. So you're saying, let me make some approximations. Mm -hmm. And then how do you know that the approximations that you're making are giving you good results? Excellent question. So uh, there are two ways we approach this. One is that we come up with some theoretical guarantees which say that the solution that we get cannot be too far from the, uh, ap the correct optimal solution. So you're going to put some bounds on. We can obtain some bounds. And the second is we uh, verify this numerically, empirically. So we uh, generate test problems. Uh, these are small enough that we can actually compute the optimal solution. And then we see how far we are off from that uh, optimal solution. Okay, so that's a good trick. You're saying I'll take a problem to which I know the solution because mm -hmm. I can solve it. Absolutely. And I'm going to use my method to see how close it got. Yes. And our hope is that for a more complicated problem that it will also deliver us uh, a good results. Exactly, that's okay. what we're hoping. Yeah, and what do you find? Uh, how, how good are your approximations? So we were very, very pleasantly surprised because ours is an approximation method, but on the test problems that we ran, they were very close to optimal. So in, Very close, what does very close mean? So in 80% of instances, we got the optimal solution. We were able to recover. 80% the... you were able to get the optimal solution you would have gotten by sort of by brute, brute force. force. Yeah, exactly. okay, fantastic. And uh, for the remaining problems, the optimality gap was a fraction of a percent, so 0.1 percent, for instance. So you're saying your solution is within 0.1 percent of optimal. Exactly. That's pretty impressive. Now, in terms of the solution method, this is what you're calling the fractional integer problem. Can you say something about that? Sure. Uh, so. What we mean by a fractional integer problem is that the objective function 
is a fraction, it's a ratio of two terms. Two terms, yeah. Uh, which is different from an easier optimization problem where the objective is a linear, a straight, a linear function, a straight line. I see. So because you're taking fraction, it becomes a non-linear thing. It becomes a non-linear, a more complicated uh, problem to solve. Okay. So that's why this is a non-trivial modeling solution. That is right. Okay. Fantastic. So you're telling me that these methods are not just for publication in management science. They can actually be used in many situations where this is an important thing, that there's an assortment and inventory is a big issue in terms of costs. Mm -hmm. So if you were to get a call from, I don't know, Big Basket or one of these companies and say, can you solve this for us? You can do it for them, right? I would be optimistic, yes. You'd be optimistic. <laughs> so let's take a look at, you know, ballpark what we are talking about. So let's say I have a company that's like a uh, 100 crores in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to make some numbers up approximately. Um, Inventory management, the cost would be close to maybe four or five percent. That sounds right. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to squeeze half a percent in that optimization, mm -hmm. we are talking about close to half of one percent of revenue. Exactly, a significant amount. Which yeah. is huge. And yeah. for big companies, it's even bigger. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, Sumit. So you're going to get lots of calls from people. Be ready for it. But at the same time, I hope the researchers also got a glimpse of how you solve these problems. There was a method to it, right? Mm -hmm. You sort of say, let me solve a simple problem, get an exact solution, equation. And then you went to say, okay, more complicated. I'll get it with some approximation. And then you go to the most realistic case, and then you check how good it is working. So mm -hmm. both rigor is there, but also at the same time, you're looking at a problem that is realistic and interesting. Yes. So thank congratulations. You. Thank you for sharing your insights and thank you for telling us how you did it. Thank you, Bhagwan. It was uh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you.